From Randy Savage versus Ricky Steamboat at WrestleMania 3 to John Cena's open challenge for the United States title to Rob Van Dam's historic run as ECW TV champion. Mid-card titles have had a lot of memorable moments, so it's no surprise that some fans are asking, should NXT or the women's division have a mid-card title of their own? Oh, that is a fantastic idea. I would just be overjoyed to see an Intercontinental Women's Championship. What? That's a terrible idea. Mid-card belts suck. However, others feel that these belts have become meaningless placeholder titles and question their very purpose in the modern era. But do they have a point? Do we need mid-card championships anymore? Well, to answer that, we have to do a little bit of digging, and the results are pretty interesting. And they're also the topic of this episode, because today, Dave knows mid-card titles. So first, let's define what we mean by a mid-card title. I know, that seems simple enough, but it's really not as easy as it sounds. To start, let's just be clear. I'm not talking about lower weight class titles, so cruiserweight belts and junior heavyweight belts don't count. For me, a mid-card title, as I'm defining it, is a secondary championship, meaning not the top tier. But it's also not a tertiary title either, which some companies do occasionally have from time to time. And this can make things quite confusing for the uninitiated. For example, the ECW Television Championship was a mid-card secondary title, established in 1992. But at WCW, the TV title was a third-tier belt created in 1974. So in the end, what's in a name? A second-tier title is a second-tier title, even if it shares the name of another branch third-tier belt. Okay, so now that we know that a mid-card title is not a third-tier belt, let's re-establish that it's not a top-tier belt either. Well, at least most of the time. Because this is where things can get a little dicey, but it's also where we can get into a little bit of history. You see, mid-card titles really began to take shape during the height of the NWA. As covered in a previous video, the National Wrestling Alliance had the goal of creating the first truly recognized World Heavyweight Championship for professional wrestling. And they did just that. However, this created a problem of its very own. In unifying so many different promotions, but only having one world title, especially in the days before TV, that meant that only a small local audience could see a champion on any given night which really doesn't do a lot for crowds. So in order to move tickets and keep fans interested, promotions under the NWA needed their own titles. These included regional belts like the NWA Pacific Northwest Heavyweight Championship, the NWA Missouri Championship, or the NWA Central States Heavyweight Championship, and plenty more. NWA promotions also had many national championships as well, like the American Heavyweight Championship, the Canadian Heavyweight Championship, or the British Empire Heavyweight Championship. Although a lot of these national titles weren't really nationally recognized by the NWA, they were just being promoted as such. Anyway, some of these belts were indeed top tier titles in their own respective promotions, but they knew to bow down to the NWA world title in the end, which made them secondary belts in the grand scheme of things. Now these localized championships meant that each region would always have a champion for people to see. Which brings us back to today. WWE is clearly the dominant brand and their handling of the Intercontinental and United States Championships on the whole has been highly criticized by many fans. Causing some fans to become dejected with the idea of mid-card belts and understandably so. Now I will admit, I do have a bit of a soft spot for mid-card titles and it's for the exact same reasons that made them popular to begin with. When I was a kid, I rarely got to see pay-per-views, but on regular TV, I got to watch wrestling all the time. But that meant that I would rarely get to see the world title. But I did get to see the Intercontinental Championship quite often. I saw it defended, contested, and sought after. This was the belt that I saw wrestlers actively competing for. Now yes, I did know that there was a world title, and I knew that people wanted it. But a championship match that I could see was worth way more than one I would only hear about the next day at school. So just like how regional belts were made to appease audiences with a title that they could see on a regular basis, so too was that true for the IC strap once upon a time. But somewhere along the way, this message got a bit muddled. And when we have part-time champs like Brock Lesnar, maybe more importance on mid-card titles is what's needed now more than ever. Perhaps the Intercontinental title should always be featured as the main event for a pay-per-view that the Universal Championship isn't on. And furthermore, going back to the regional idea with the WWE's global reach expanding, how about the United Kingdom Championship? Maybe we should have more titles like that, but for different countries that rarely get to see live WWE shows in person. That way, people from all over the world get to see a WWE title match of sorts on a regular basis. Because without these measures, mid-card belts stopped being titles for the people and just became another accessory. As the years rolled on in the WWE, we saw these belts defended less and less. 
pay-per-views where it was reserved for a pre-show or not even on the card at all, or mid-card champions that barely defended their championships. WWE has taken a lot of these once great belts and relegated them to less than their former glory. But it's not just about how much they're defending either. As Bruce Wayne put it to Terry McGinnis in Batman Beyond, by the way, go check out my other channel, Dave Knows Comics, it's not the mantle of Batman that makes the man. It's the man that makes the mantle. I have said it over and over again. I believe that the champion makes the championship, not the other way around. And this philosophy, again, is sticking with the OG roots for mid-card titles. Look at it this way. If you were a promoter and your company was part of a National Wrestling Alliance and you had your own regional title, you would naturally give it to your top guy. It's just how you would reward him. So what if the NWA was acknowledging some other wrestler right now? This champ is your champ, and this is the title he earned by being your best. And should his efforts with this title in your promotion prove that he is definitely championship material, well, then the NWA might just come knocking at your door wanting to make your champ the NWA world champ. And that's just how things used to work. The belt was both reward and proving ground for a wrestler. But sadly, WWE began giving the title to wrestlers who were never going to be main eventing WrestleMania. Now sure, sometimes you can't predict everything correctly all the time. Occasionally you would put the title on someone thinking they're going to become a main eventer, but they never really connect with the crowd. However, other times the writing is on the wall and it seems pretty obvious that this guy is never going to be top shelf material. Now this isn't saying there's something wrong with a wrestler if they've never held anything higher than second tier. Mid card belts are more than just mere stepping stones. But what I am saying is that a mid card champion should be a champion in nature. Mr. Perfect, Razor Ramon, Roddy Piper, all never won higher than IC in the WWF, but all were quality championship material. And those are the kind of champions we need in Midgard. Wrestlers who are already champions at heart, they just need the belt to prove it. In my opinion, what we don't need is more lower tier guys that WWE is just trying to get over by slapping some gold on them. This will just weaken the prestige of the belt, and if done too often, the belt will do less for anyone who wins it in the future. Okay, now I know, I've been talking a lot about the WWE, but what about other promotions? Well, I will say, in other companies, mid-card titles seem to be getting better treatment than the WWE has been doing in recent memory, at least for periods of time. Like TNA's X Division title, for example. It was one of TNA's biggest selling points and attracted a lot of fans of the company. Now, yes, there was a weight restriction at one point, but once Samoa Joe started entering the fray, I think it's safe to say the 230 pound weight limit was abandoned. Also, look at Ring of Honor's television championship, which landed around the waist of wrestlers like Adam Cole, Roderick Strong, and Jay Lethal. Or how about New Japan and Wrestle Kingdom 8, their biggest show of the year, and their main event was for the IWGP Intercontinental Championship, which featured a fantastic match between Hiroshi Tanahashi and Shinsuke Nakamura. New Japan held a fan vote to determine the main event, and fans chose the Intercontinental bout as their main event. And let's not forget about ECW and WCW. As mentioned by many, ECW's TV champ Rob Van Dam took that title and put it to the main event scene. He made that the title that people wanted to see most. And in WCW, not only was the United States title held to a higher regard on the whole than it's been in the WWE, but WCW also once had the United States Tag Team Championship as well. That's right, a mid-card tag team title. Oh, and the NWA and other companies have had mid-card tag belts too, just to be clear. So imagine, a tag team division so robust that they required their own secondary title. And furthermore, although it occupies a bit of a gray area, the WCW's big gold belt was once the WCW International title, which is debated among fans whether it counts as a secondary belt or a primary one. And with that being said, the big gold belt as WWE's world title would eventually yet again become seen as a debatable mid-card belt by some fans after the first brand split ended. But that's not the only default championship to talk about in the company now known as the WWE. There have been plenty of mid-card belts that used to occupy the house that McMahon built, such as the WWF North American Championship, the WWF International Championship, and there also was the WWF Intercontinental Tag Team title. It didn't last a year, but it existed is all I'm saying. Well, as you can see, once upon a time, mid-card titles meant a lot, and they can, and should, mean a lot once again. Is it too late for WWE's current crop of mid-tier belts? Or are the US and IC straps doing just fine? What would you do to continue the honor of mid-card championships? Let me know down in the comments, and don't forget to support me over on Patreon, just like Shockwave1209. Thank you so much for watching this video, and this has been Dave No.